So now we're going to look at a theorem. This is the property for a limit at infinity. So we're looking at evaluating a function as x goes towards positive infinity or as x goes toward negative infinity. This theorem is what we're going to use for the rest of this section. So we want to look at what happens when I evaluate a limit of a function towards positive infinity when at the top of the fraction we have a constant and at the bottom of the fraction we have a variable. Okay, If we are sending that particular variable, whatever that variable is, if we're sending that variable to positive or towards negative infinity, then the value of the fraction, the y values, will get smaller and smaller and smaller and actually approach a y value of 0. So we're going to say that uh, as a theorem, that as x approaches infinity, if you have a constant divided by a variable, and this says that a variable raised to any power, so it could be 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed, or just 1 over x then the, the value of that will approach 0. So the limit will be 0. This is basically going back to the table that we filled out in the last video. So let's go back. The first table that we filled out right here, we were saying we have a constant and the denominator is increasing. If the denominator continues to increase without bound, then the value of the fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller we are actually approaching a y value of 0. We actually saw that happen with the table. So there's an example of why and how that works. But now we're going to just call it a theorem. So from now on, if you are evaluating the limit where you have a constant divided by a variable raised to any power, then we're going to say that the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, the value of that will become 0. So to evaluate the limit for a rational function, um, our, our fractions are going to get a little bit more complicated than just 1 over x squared. So we're going to actually develop a particular uh, process for how we're going to evaluate this limit. The first one here, example 18, is already written as a very simple fraction. We have 1 over x squared. We know that using the theorem, which is what we're going to use from now on, if we have a constant, so here we have a constant of 1, there's no variable at the top at all. In the denominator we have a variable raised to some power. So this is an example of the theorem. We have a constant. When we say constant we mean just a number, no variables at all in the numerator. In the denominator we have a variable and it is raised to the power of 2. But the presence of the variable and the variable increasing without bound going towards positive infinity implies that the limit of this function will be zero. And this is just straight using the theorem. Now in example 19 we have a little bit more complicated fraction. So we're going to use the theorem but we're going to use it in a little bit different way. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take each term within the top and the bottom of the fraction and I'm going to divide. We're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by the expression x to the power of n. This re represents the highest power of x in the denominator of the expression, so that's really important. We're going to use the highest power of x that is present in the denominator of the expression. So for example, the first thing that we're going to do here, I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches positive infinity. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each term in the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room there. I'm going to rewrite everything as is. But then I'm going to look for the highest power of x in the denominator, which is x cubed. And I'm going to divide every term individually by x cubed. Okay, so that's step one of evaluating um, a function, a rational function, uh, when we are sending x toward positive or negative infinity. Now we're going to reduce each of those fractions. All right, so here x cubed and x cubed cancel, so we're left with 3. Here um, we're going to be canceling out 
x squared from the top and the bottom, so I'm left with 1 over x. Okay, here nothing cancels, so I'm left with 1 over x cubed. Okay, and then in the bottom, x cubed divided by itself leaves me with 1. And then nothing cancels from the second fraction, so that's 1 over x cubed. Okay, now what we're going to do, and this first one I'm going to do a, a little bit longer, then we're going to develop a shortcut. We're actually evaluating the limit of each particular term individually. So we're seeing what happens as we evaluate the limit of each particular term, sending x to positive infinity. So every term in the top, we're evaluating each of those limits individually. And then we're going to do the same thing in the bottom. We're going to see what happens as x goes to positive infinity of 1, plus the limit as x goes to positive infinity of 1 over x cubed. Now we want to know what's happening as x goes to positive infinity. So as x goes to positive infinity, here we just have a constant on the inside. So x increasing without bound has no effect on the fact that 3 is 3. So in this case, we're going to end up with just 3. I'm going to come over here and write it. So we have 3. Um, in my next term, we have the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 1 over x. This is a direct application of our theorem. We have a constant divided by a variable. So since this is a direct application of our theorem, we know that's going to be 0. This is also a direct application of the theorem. We have a constant divided by a variable and we're sending x to positive infinity, so the denominator will increase without bound. So once again, direct application of our theorem, we get 0. The limit as x approaches infinity of 1. No variable there, so the answer will still be 1. And in this case, we're using, once again, the direct application of our theorem. Constant divided by a variable, we know the value of that limit will turn out to be 0. Now we're going to simplify our fraction. We're going to add everything across the top and add everything across the bottom. We end up with a value of 3. Okay, so we divide by the highest power of x in our denominator, reduce each fraction, and then evaluate the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of each individual term. Once we have those limits evaluated, we add across the bottom and top of the fraction, and that will be our limit. Let's come up here and just say that the limit here then would be 3. In the next example, we are evaluating the limit as x approaches positive infinity. And we have a more complicated expression, rational expression on the inside. So when we're evaluating at infinity, we want to use our theorem. In order to use our theorem, we will need to divide each of these terms by the highest power of x that we see in the denominator. So we're going to find the limit as x approaches positive infinity. And I'm going to rewrite every term from above. Now I'm going to reduce each of these fractions. Now I'm going to evaluate the limit of each of these fractions, each of these terms individually. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, that's a direct application of our theorem. That's 0. Each one of these, we can see at the top, is basically going to be a direct application of our theorem. So each one of these will turn out to have a value of 0. In the denominator, we're going to do the same thing. Of course, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 1 is still going to be 1. Now these last two, once again, are a direct application of our theorem. Constant divided by a power of x. Constant divided by a power of x. So when we simplify, the numerator turns out to be 0. The denominator turns out to be 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. So the limit of that fraction, that rational expression, as x goes to positive infinity, that limit is 0. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with example 21. We're going to identify the highest power of x in the denominator, which is x cubed. And then we're going to divide each of the terms within that fraction by x cubed. Now we're going to simplify each of these fractions. Now 
And now I'm going to evaluate the limit for each term. So as x goes to positive infinity, we end up with 1. Here, this is a direct application of our theorem. We get 0. Another direct application of our theorem, we get 0. Now across my denominator, we get 1. The last two, once again, are direct applications of our theorem. So we get 1 divided by 1, which gives us 1. So the limit of this rational expression turns out to be 1. Our last example, evaluating limits, we're asked to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So once again, we're going to identify the largest power of x in the denominator, which is x squared. And we're going to divide each term by that largest power of x. Now we're going to reduce each of these fractions. And we're going to evaluate the limit. Okay. I'm going to skip the first one just for a minute. We're going to do the others. So we're going to get something here. Um, this is going to be 1. The last term is a direct application of our theorem, so plus 0. In the denominator, we're going to get 1 plus the last two are direct applications of our theorem, so plus zero plus zero. Question is, what happens as I evaluate the limit of x squared? So let's come to the side for a second and just look at what we're asked to find. We're asked to find uh, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of x squared. What happens as x increases without bound? So just imagine for a second what that graph looks like. It's a parabola. What happens as x goes toward positive infinity? The y value is increasing without bound. And if we were to make a table of this, we would see the same thing. If x is 1, we get 1. If x is 10, we get 100. If x is 1,000, we get a really, really large number. So our outputs are increasing without bound. So we could say infinity. Or you could also say the limit does not exist. If the limit for one of our terms does not exist, then the overall limit does not exist. All right. Notice that this is not an application of our theorem. This is a variable divided by a constant. Remember that our theorem is a constant divided by a variable, so we get 0. If you have the opposite, where you have a variable divided by a constant, then the limit would not exist.